Howdy folks, here is the third video, we're actually now on the second floor. So here it actually shows the elevator legs. This is essentially how product was, they're these post-like structures that are used by belts. And that is essentially how they carried the grains up to the fourth floor but not only that but on this floor too you get to see some of dark county's history as well you know some posters of the dark county fair you know as far back as the as 1915 or even back in the 30s and the 20s I mean, it's been a big deal for a long time. But, uh, yeah, so what I also wanted to mention, too, is this guy, George Adams. He was actually, you know, part of the major Ohio militia. He was a major. And he was a commandant for Fort Greenville. So... In other words, he had a very important position during the Revolutionary War. What's fascinating is back in, I believe it was 1824, George Adams actually received a grant from uh, President James Matt, or no, I'm trying to remember what his name was. He was the fifth president. Hmm. Give me a second. Yeah, James Monroe. Okay. That's what I said. Yeah. I'm bad. <laughs> well, either way, James Monroe issued a grant over to uh, George Adams in which he could have some property in this part of Ohio. And he also had some water rights. So initially, George Adams just had a log cabin that was here at the time and you know it was just the living area that he had but then as it got into the 1840s around that time or so that was when the construction of this whole entire mill began and <clears throat> eventually that was when it got owned by the Bear family. I mean, there were a couple of other individuals who owned it before the Bear. I think it was the Hart family, but it doesn't list it on here on the brief history. But the Hart family didn't finish the construction, but they sold it still. But it was the Bear family, when they bought this place, they finished the construction, and in 1850, is when they began the operation of this mill. And as you can see, you know, over the years, it has changed several hands. So you guys are more than welcome to pause and read the sign if you so desire. But I think one of my favorite owners, you know, found on here is Charlie and Flossie Andrews. They were big time amateurs but aside from that they were actually one of the most popular environmentalists at the time and that's the case because Greenville Creek during their ownership was getting very polluted because of the sewage treatment plant and they decided to take the case to the Dark County Courthouse. However, they were at first disheartened because they didn't win the case. However, though, they, you know, just reading from me, they didn't give up. But eventually, they actually won the landmark case, and it was brought to the Ohio Supreme Court. And eventually, they, they actually did win that case, 
And what was fascinating, too, is it was the very first time that a city was held responsible for an environmental issue in the state of Ohio. I mean, that, that happened in Greenville, folks. I mean, what does that tell you, guys? I mean, there's just... That's another thing about this mill is it's a way to help us remember Greenville's history. I mean, who would have thought of such parts, you know? That, that's a big deal. But this is the part that I really wanted to show you guys. So, here are the actual burr stones. So this is what is responsible for the grinding purpose. You know, when it comes to the grain, you know, whether it be wheat, buckwheat, or even corn. So, nice thing about burr stones is they don't wear down as quickly. It takes them quite some time, quite a few years. And <clears throat> as you can see, since it's on basically a metal hook that actually allows the burr stones to be lifted and be flipped over for any resurfacing. But what was neat, too, is essentially whatever grain there was, you'd feed it right into the center and the burr stones would rotate and any grain would be grinded. It would be brought out using a centrifugal force now when you hear centrifugal like what exactly is that supposed to mean well this talks a little bit about physics mates so let me think of an example so say you're at a playground right and you've got a mar you're on a merry-go-round okay so you're on this merry-go-round so when you're at the center you know it doesn't seem bad you're just spinning but then as you, you know, move just a little bit, that rotation, it forces you to get closer to the edge and will eventually throw you off. Well, the same principle applies to the burr stones. You know, as it's rotating, the product will eventually be driven to the outer edge and thus will give you that coarse product of the grain which will be used for flour so that's that's a good way of remembering you know like what exactly like how it like how it exactly works but here is also another sign i was talking about these just the other day these are the leffel turbines the, these are essentially what are responsible for providing power to this mill. It actually gives you the specific dynamics of the building itself. So it specifically uses uh, direct current. It doesn't use any AC. It's just something I used, was mentioning just the other day. But these turbines rely more on water pressure than that of you know, discharge or current. So it's quite different. It's not like your typical turbine. And the first question that you might have on your mind is, does this smell have any water wheels? They do not. And I believe they don't have the water wheel because, well, what would really be the use of it you know just because the water mill just really wouldn't be able to produce any electricity not really and you figure this mill it isn't really on the direct creek either it's there's a mill race so the last component that I wanted to mention about this floor is the roller mills. So the roller mills are basically they were a type of equipment that was used when mills were modernizing. What was fascinating is 
millers back at the time, you know, in the 1800s, the, you know, people who could afford them, they would get rid of the birthstones that we were just talking about. And, or if they could not afford the roller mills, some owners would just basically take the $500 in terms of insurance, which I believe would probably be cost up, would be worth up to, oh, probably about $1,500 or so, approximately. They would just burn the mill and then just look for any new line of work. And that's, that's the thing about roller mills. So they use these metal cylinders, also known as rollers, which are basically within these machines. They would do the same thing. However, though, it was found that since they produce high amounts of heat, it would actually kind of ruin the product. Because if you have too much heat, nutrient value is lost. Because it's basically getting burned up. Yeah, so that kind of shows you the interior. But that's the biggest thing. Is they're not quite as reliable. You know? That's just something... But Bear's Mill was one of those types of mills that kept it, kept both. So, alrighty. Hey, I thought I would share that with you guys. I kind of mentioned both components about some of the owners and also what happens on this floor. So, alright mates, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Journey on a Journey is outwards. Take care, folks.